what is going on youtube um welcome back to the channel i graduated i am officially uh, a master student i have a master's degree in computer science crazy right um i have a bachelor's in electrical engineering so it's kind of wild to think that i've managed to obtain this degree and complete it um, with a good gpa um I might make videos on that. Uh, let me know in the comments if you'd like me to talk about anything in particular or um, just ask me any questions you have uh, for me down below in the comments. Um, since I graduated, I figured this would be a good time to talk about some of the struggles of being a master's student in the US. When a lot of people come to the US for their masters, they think that this country is going to be kind of a utopia. And when they come over here, um, all of their dreams are gonna come true and everything's gonna work out and this is gonna be the best thing they've ever done in their lives. Um, while some of that may be true, um, a lot of it in the beginning, especially in maybe the first year of your master's or maybe even the second year, will not go the way you envisioned it. Um, and it's for this reason that I'm making this video, because I want your expectations to be on par with what is reality, because otherwise you might be faced with disappointment and you might have a hard time just grasping um, the truth. Of, of life here or what you'll see when you get here. Um, so without uh, much further ado, let's get into it. Um, I have a couple of points written down here. Um, I'll talk about, I guess, the most important one, the first. So I think that probably the biggest drawback that well, at least Indian students or, um, you know, I'm from India. Um, I can't really vouch for uh, people from other countries who came here, but this is what I feel. And this is something um, that you might feel as well if um, your home country had a, I don't know, a high population density, but a thing to kind of like kind of get used to or expect in the US when you come here is a crippling sense of loneliness, right? Um, I know it sounds bad, but uh, just hear me out, right? The thing is, the US has a lot less people per square area, um, just a lot less people in general compared to um, India. So when you show up over here, the unless you like live in New York or something, or maybe even so, the streets are gonna seem empty. Um, there won't be as much traffic on the roads as you expect. It's just people are gonna seem far and wide spread out and social interaction will not be as high as you might think it would right and so partly because of that and partly because you know you've left your friends and family back in india and you've come here and now you are trying to make a whole new circle of friends over here coupled with the fact that you have a master's course load so you basically have no free time um it can get kind of difficult or rather um making a social circle here can feel challenging and for all these reasons combined um you may feel a sense of loneliness here that you don't feel back at home um, in india because quite frankly there is no one next door to reach out i mean i do have my roommates next door but the point is you may feel like there's no one next door to kind of 
um, reach out and talk to if you need help or if you um, just need company because when the semester starts people get busy and everybody has classes and it's kind of hard to really um, sync things together but um, from my experience the, the loneliness lasts for like a year after showing up or rather the loneliness lasts until you manage to find a proper circle of friends in the US because once you get a strong social circle in the US, it kind of goes away um, because you just have people to hang out with um, and it's fun. So um, I found that if you want to boost your like just making friends or whatever um, in the US, the easiest thing you can do is just get out of the house, right? Um, get out of the house, go to campus, go to the gym, go to just, just, just talk to people on the bus, talk to people at the bus stand, um, say hi to people whose faces are familiar. Um, you need to get out of the house or go to a lot of social gatherings for interaction to happen. And so through those interactions, you get to meet people you like, and then you become friends, right? So I'm in computer science. Um, a lot of the classes we have are online and we also have a high workload. So a lot of students feel like they don't even need to go to class because they could just watch stuff online or even just watch the required bits online and pass the exam or the assignments. I highly suggest you to get out of your house uh, and get social interaction because that's the first step that's the only way you make friends and then by making friends um, or rather good friends is how you um, beat the feeling of loneliness but that's something that you should expect um, it's not a pleasant feeling but it will exist for I'd say a year, a year and a half after you show up with, show up over here. Um, if you're extremely social and you make friends really easily and um, you just, you know, make a big group of friends in the beginning, then you can kind of um, skip that altogether. But I think that that is something you should expect. Um, it's not a bad thing. Um, it's, it's just the way it is, right? So, that's something to keep in mind. Um, the other thing I think is quite frankly, a pain in the ass. It's basically money, right? If you're uh, someone who's come to the US to study their masters, you most likely have a high student debt and you most likely don't have a huge amount of savings in India to just spend cash on. So most likely your parents are sending you money every month for your living expenses and simple things like taking a cab or uh, ordering food can just seem expensive because um, or leaving tips for that matter. Um, you're supposed to leave tips whenever you go to a restaurant or for any public service, really 10%, 15%, whatever. Um, you might offend people if you don't leave tips, but it's like, it's kind of a custom really. Um, so stuff like that might seem expensive for you if you just shown up and you have no money, um, but that's normal. Uh, so, you might so you know it's like if you walk into a shop and like you're a, you're you're like a, a broke student um and they know you're a student i suppose it's okay to like not leave a tip but if you walk into like a fancy restaurant and something with a group of friends and you your bill is 65 um the expectation is you should round it up to 70 for or whatever um just so you know you uh give a sign of courtesy to the people working there um uh, but the point is that 
you might find that you're tracking your weekly groceries. Uh, you can't order the groceries you want because they're too expensive. Um, cab fares seem very expensive. You're racking your head on how to get to a particular place because you want to save money. Um, buying stuff like furniture and tables and stuff might seem very expensive. You might have no furniture in your house or your room, but you think twice about buying anything because it costs so much money. Um, you might also be wanting to eat out and you can't eat out because the, the delivery fees are insane and they cost a lot of money. Um, basically, you might find yourself tracking your expenses very, very deeply and this might be annoying and stressful. Um, and it is, um, it's just something I wanna give you a heads up to because this is a part of the student lifestyle this is the part of it. There is no way to get rid of this feeling um, except earning money. So the only way to overcome this problem is to earn money through a part-time job, an internship, preferably an internship because you make out of money over there or maybe a full-time job or whatever. But only when you have disposable income is when you can do all this stuff and you begin to feel like your quality of life will improve. Um, and it might be just small things like being able to order food or just taking a cab somewhere that you, cause you just wanna go shopping or whatever, but small things like that will make you realize that it's really important to like have income and um, just have uh, money to spend um, that you can spare, but it's, uh, if you feel down in the dumps because you're stressed out about your finances, uh, know that that's normal, right? Um, I've even borrowed money from friends a few months because I was low on my rent or whatever, but it's like that is part of the deal, right? Um, this might suck for people who left high paying jobs in India and came to study their masters and now they feel like shit because, um, well, you know, um, everything's so expensive or they have to like just track stuff so hard. But yeah, just know that it's like a time-based thing. Um, you're gonna feel like that until you start earning properly. And then when you do, the thing's gonna go away and life's gonna like feel much better, but just kind of do what you will with it. You know, um, I have a video on how to budget, I think. I'll leave that down in the description for anyone who's curious. Um, Oh yeah, before I forget, um, if you want to buy furniture and stuff like that for really cheap, like NC State has these uh, these sales, they're called surplus sales. So basically like it's university equipment, like tables and chairs and monitors and stuff like that. And you get them for like really cheap, even bikes and stuff. Uh, you can just go to a sale. It's like a first come first serve auction basis and you can buy stuff for really cheap, but you have to spend the time to go there and arrange transport to and from that place. I suggest you do that. Or if your, if your university has stuff like that, you can go ahead and do that. Um, also people tend to move out, um, around like August, I think July, August, cause that's when most leases end on renting houses so when people move out most people don't take all their stuff with them a lot of furniture is just quite literally left outside near the dumpster or whatever or just will be left outside and you'd be surprised by the quality of some of these things because they're like pretty good sofas and tables and just stuff like um You'd be, you'd be surprised, with, even even kitchenware, like you'd be surprised what you find, but uh, they're, they're all be, I mean, just pretty good quality, like stuff that you would own. Just imagine you didn't have enough space to pack everything and you had to dump some of it off because the cost of transporting the thing was more than the cost of the thing itself. So I think if you can just quite literally find stuff like that for free, um, cause you timed your thing correctly. Uh, so, when people move out, uh, you, you know, it's usually like the first person to see it takes it. So 
if you can find stuff like that, that's like a great way to like just get free stuff, honestly. Um, Facebook Marketplace is another if you want deals or whatever. Um, so there are ways to get stuff for cheap. You just have to like kind of use your head a little bit. Um, so, you know, just um, I suppose that's useful to know. The other thing I'd like to say is certain courses might seem heavy. Um, I personally think that other than the IITs in India, the engineering education system of all other colleges um, it just seems very light when compared to the education system in the US because um, in India you could just study before the exams and get away with it but here you have assignments and stuff constantly throughout the whole semester, um, which are not easy. So you you have to kind of study and put in the work throughout the whole semester. And um, some courses can be pretty heavy. Um, so you, you're gonna kind of, you have to like stay engaged throughout the semester. So it feels a lot more difficult. Um, I think that certain courses you take might seem heavier than you actually anticipate them. And because of which the enjoyment you get from taking the course uh, might go down and you might begin to hate that topic or that subject and you just start um, studying to just be able to pass the thing. And um, on a sort of worst case scenario, I'd say that in certain cases, a course or your overall course load might start to seem so heavy that you might to think that you might not be able to finish the course itself. And so you might be forced, you might think about dropping a course or if you're just extremely down in the dumps you might start getting doubts in your head that, you know, masters might not be for you after all, or this whole thing might be too difficult and maybe it's time to like pack your bags and like go back to India or whatever. Um, but, you know, if you're, if you feel that way at, at any point of time during your masters, I encourage you to believe that that's actually a very common feeling. I felt it, uh, my, my roommates have felt it. It's a, it's more common than you would think to feel overwhelmed by um, your coursework. So it's more about management and figuring out how you deal with just getting shit done. Um, and it's less to do with the actual course itself, right? So if you're someone who's struggling with stuff like this, I encourage you to look at the bare minimum that you need to do to pass the course. Um, for example, um, you know, obviously I would like, I would encourage everyone to go to class, um, but for whatever reason, if you feel like you have no time on your hands and you're like drowning in work or whatever, I encourage you to think that what is really the minimum you need to do to pass the course. Your answer is probably submit the homeworks on time and then pass the exam for which you probably don't even need to go to class and maybe you don't even need to watch all the lectures right um so I, uh, while i encourage you to do all of that and really make the most of your masters if you're someone who's struggling i encourage you to be smart about it and just kind of understand your workload and what you need to do to um kind of um, roll with it. And well, another thing I think that I have to mention is household chores. So most likely you're someone who hasn't cooked before because your parents always cooked for you or you hired a cook or you had got food from your college because you lived in hostel or whatever. And you've never actually done um, cleaning. You've never actually cleaned the house. You've never actually, you know, broomed the floors and like mopped floors or like clean dishes or like whatever, right? Um, 
when you start doing this stuff, it's going to seem like a pain in the ass um, because time is required to do all this stuff and you're going to be busy anyway with your studies. But this sort of thing is something you get used to eventually, right? You might be complaining for the first six months that you had household help in India and you don't over here, but you just get used to it, right? It becomes a point in your life when you just kind of get used to it. You sweep your room once a week, you cook maybe twice or thrice a week, you know, uh, wash your clothes, clean the house, whatever, right? Um, I mean, you have a washer and dryer. I said wash your clothes as if like it takes any effort to, to, to actually do that. But um, the the thing is like, it's really a matter of habit and it just is it's just a matter of time you know things will like things will fit in um if you're someone you know cooking i think is a life skill that everybody should probably learn um i didn't know how to cook anything when i first came here and then over my first two years, I was so busy with studying that I barely, like I was interested in cooking, but I barely learned how to cook like the most basic stuff. So I could like kind of get by for two years and, you know, obviously eat proper nutrition and stuff like that. But I could never actually fully explore how to cook because I was just always so busy with my studies and, and, and other things, but you know, the point is it's worth uh putting in some time and you're gonna get better at this stuff eventually one way or another and you don't really have to worry too much about it um it's gonna fall into place and you're gonna get used to it i know it's a pain it's even a pain when i go for a vacation back to india and i come back and i'm like oh damn i have to cook again this is such a pain in the ass um because you know like i don't cook as well as like my as my mom does or whatever but you're gonna get used to it don't worry too much it's just gonna like feel fall into place um with time and i think another thing that you need to get used to is a feeling that you have no free time so if you're someone who's been working a nine to five back in india and you come here to work uh, to study for your masters so a nine to five usually means that you're free after five and then it also means that you have weekends for yourself to just kind of Lays around, watch Netflix, hang out, do whatever, right? But when you are like a master's student, you're gonna eventually realize there are always two or three assignments that you have pending. And some of them are actually group assignments. So you can't really even work ahead and be done on time because it needs other people's help. And so it's, it kind of feels like you're always working. There is no fixed schedule. So it's kind of like you can work if you want, you can also not work if you want. But in my experience, I've been able to take like six, uh, like half a day off at max during like difficult semesters. If I took a whole day off, it would reset me and that would bite me back in the ass because um, my backlog would continue to build up, right? and and it's it's something you need to understand because um at least in computer science the way the curriculum is designed is that in order to understand the ith lecture of a course you need to have seen the i minus one -th lecture of the course you can't just skip a class and attend the next class you might not understand what the professor is talking about right or, you know, maybe the professor told you to like do some reading if you're going to class and you didn't and now you're lost in class, right? So there's like a constant sense of, it's a continuum and you have to be on track in order to just understand everything that's going on. And um, if you wanna go to class in person, you should really just stay on top of things and make sure your backlog isn't too much. So it doesn't build up like that. Um, you know, not to mention that, uh, you know, your assignments will be obviously 
connected to the latest thing taught in class and it's not something you can just go back and study you'll have to you have to watch those lectures in sequence to understand and so um the kind of it kind of ties it kind of goes back to why the education system is more involved over here and why you spend more time uh studying and um you know just doing stuff um I'm not really going to comment as to which one's better and which one's worse, um, but whatever. Um, and so, you know, you might feel like you have no free time and uh, you might feel as if you're always studying and that any free time you have is extreme, extremely precious and, and rare uh, to like um, even go out and like hang out with your friends. Um, I encourage you to believe that that's a good thing because if you have a very little amount of time and you try to make the most of that time that's a good thing because that kind of teaches you how to be optimal with time management and it also teaches you how to prioritize certain things in life um not to mention the fact that um it makes you feel like the small amount of time that you then do spend with your friends or whatever it is the the thing is um uh, it makes you feel like that time is special cuz you worked hard to be able to be able to be free um for that amount of time right so that's that's just the way i think and i encourage you to think the same way and just not cry and complain all day that you have no free time so that's a, that's, that's the way i like to think about it um i actually you know i don't think it's a bad thing um i enjoy that aspect of it um but yeah that's that's about it um you know most likely most likely here's what's going to happen right you're going to show up in the us and the first one to one and a half years is going to suck because of a high course load you having no friends um you feeling overwhelmed uh cuz the style of life is different over here and you also have to learn household chores and you have no money so it's going to suck but after a year to a year and a half uh you're going to earn money from your internship um you will have friends by then cuz you know you've been um trying to socialize um for the last year um you will have gotten better at cooking and other household skills so those won't seem as bad to you uh you will have gotten a hang of how to manage your courses and how to manage your time so it you know you just you you're going to be better at courses overall and maybe less stressed and yeah um you're going to have money so you can just buy what you want and just treat yourselves to like nice little things and um maybe your overall quality of life will improve right but i think it's it's about at the maybe 1.5 year mark on average the 1 to 1.5 year mark on average when things begin to look good and you begin to feel a lot better because you've managed to sort a lot of things out and life isn't as hard as like whatever that you thought it previously was but you know i just encourage you to remember the motivation of why you showed up to the us to study right could be a job could be education could be maybe you want to do a phd maybe you want to explore something learn something keep that in mind cuz that is something you will be doing constantly throughout your 2 years even though life could be hard right so even if other aspects of your life suck and you know um you're complaining and things look difficult um or you know as long as you're making progress on your main goal or you you are clear in your head why you came here and you are making progress to that goal or to your 
uh, main career path or your ambition or whatever it is, uh, you will feel motivated and driven to keep doing the thing because you know you have a reason for doing it. And so you're going to keep pushing and um, you're not going to quit. So I encourage you to find that reason and remember that reason because that's a very important part of the whole thing. Um, if you don't have a reason that's strong enough, you might just begin to feel like you don't know why you came here because things are like so hard for you or whatever. Um, this, this whole thing is me trying to tell you that a certain struggle exists. Um, I will not deny it. Um, just coming here for your masters is not like a dream getaway where everything is easy and suddenly you've made it in life. No, like a fight definitely exists once you show up because um, a lot of parameters in your life have, have changed. But, you know, for me, it's been a good thing. It's been a dramatically good thing because I feel like I've managed to make um, progress on a lot of areas in my life, including fitness and other things, which I don't think I would have been able to do quite in that manner um, had I been continuing doing the things um, I was doing in the way I was doing them um, back in India. Um, no hate, of course, it's just perspective. And I think that overall, this has been a dramatically good thing for me coming to the US for masters. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's been it. That's the video. Uh, I just wanted to like reset your expectations in case you're coming to the U.S. with a head full of dreams and looking at the stars in the sky. Um, you can still do those things, but set your expectations right because if your expectations don't meet rea reality, the difference will cause suffering. When they do meet reality, you will have no suffering because it's kind of like you've accepted life is going to be like that. Right. Um, so yeah, wish you all the best if you're a student or if you are someone who's showing up in the future for your masters. That's it for the video. Drop a like, subscribe, let me know what stuff you'd like me to see. You just let me know what you like to see on the channel. That's been it. Hello. Have a great day. Peace out. Stay safe.